Good day, it's Tony Fortunato for the technology firm and NetBees. I'm doing an, another little write-up for the folks there and I hope you enjoy it. It's about iPerf version 2 and iPerf version 3. Let's jump right into it. So a little background. So after uh, all these years I wasn't even aware there was uh, version 2, 3 and 3.1 and a couple in between you'll see. Even with version 2, there are various versions available, right? So it's kind of a big deal to make sure you know what version you're running. As a rule of thumb, use the most current version of iPerf if you have no real preferences or you're just getting started. If you do have iPerf out there, please make sure you minimally match the same versions of iPerf. Um, it gets a little different when you go cross-platform, right? So Android and Windows, that sort of thing. But I'm sure you get, you get where I'm going with this. iPerf runs as a command line tool. But there are some graphical versions out there, like JPerf, XJPerf. There's a bunch of them out there. Just, I would strongly encourage you, just my personal opinion, my humble opinion, I would strongly encourage you to just play with iPerf at the command line first, get comfortable with it, and then if you want to try the graphical version stuff, go for it, because uh, the graphical stuff um, may take away from the performance. You'll see what I'm getting at probably later on in the presentation. iPerf runs in memory. That's why we like it. Uh, by default, you can always change that, but by default runs in memory and it does not involve your disk. Again, you can always change that, but by default it does not. iPerf relies on simple architecture. The client is the dash C and the server is the dash S. And, and again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just hold on a second, you'll see where I'm going. When running iPerf as a server in a Windows environment, ensure you run it in a command prompt as an administrator or you get the following message. Uh, the message will vary a little bit depending on your version of operating system, but most of the times you'll see this, open SC manager failed, access is denied, 0x5, that's what you'll see. Um, that took me almost, oh I don't know, half a day to figure out what that even meant the first time I came across that. So please make sure the server, not the client, the server is running in some kind of administrator mode, equivalent mode, that sort of thing. And ensure your firewalls are configured properly to allow iPerf to work properly. Now, here's my lab. Simple. Two computers. Real simple. Same VLAN, right? No routing, no nothing. Both these, one gig, full duplex. Everything's fine, right? Real simple stuff. No tricky. Now, we got a client and we have a server. What's the difference? Well, the server, let's do that one first. The server has iPerf-S. The client is iPerf-C. So one way of playing with iPerf without needing two computers is simply open two command prompts within the iPerf application folder, wherever you put iPerf. And then you simply run iPerf-S in one command. Again, make sure it's administrator, right? And then the second one doesn't have to be. You run iPerf-C and then your loop back address 127001 and this will run a test within your machine and it gets you familiar with all the options the syntax it's a great way to play with it right and in this case it is it also tells me that my machine has 5.83 gigabits per second kind of within it if you will all right now the um, output looks different. So with iPerf version 2, the output is pretty straightforward. It just says client connecting, the port number, so on and so on. And at the end, it tells me the actual uh, throughput or the bandwidth, right? iPerf version 3 kind of gives you this second by second blow, right? Which is kind of neat. It, some people complain it's kind of cluttered, but it, that's just the way it is by default. Everything's by default, folks. Now, you could do the same output with iPerf version 2 by using the dash I space one option, which means every one second interval, it will print out the results. So you can make version two look like version three by simply adding that dash I space one option. Okay. Now, I prefer version 2.09. That's what I'm playing with here. A uh, little tip for you, you might want to rename the iPerf executables because they may get copied around and all that kind of stuff. And by default, it's just iperf.exe. And iperf3 is just iperf3.exe. So you really don't know, is it 2.09, right? That sort of thing. Well, you can just do an iperf-v and it tells you that, but it still doesn't tell you here if it's a 32 or 64-bit system unless you happen to run, by mistake, a 64-bit app on a 32-bit system, then obviously it'll tell you that, right? 
but you might want to think of renaming these things just so they make a little more sense. So I performed a simple test with the following iperf command iperf-c churchill-r dash c churchill that's the host so you can put a name or an IP address and then iperf-s is the server end of it right so now we've got to pay attention to which address the name resolves to why because in iperf version 2 if it resolves to an ipv6 address it will actually fail it'll say connection refused or there'll be a huge pregnant pause and then it'll start to work you'll never figure that out if that's the case just manually put the ipv4 address in there and you're good to go okay if you don't want to do the dash r the dash r provides an upload it stops and then does a download test you get both numbers so without the dash r you simply only get an upload test so when i want to see the results even easier without all the cluttered output which i'm going to show you in a moment you can always add this pipe find double quote slash sec double quote now i'll show you in a moment why that why that even works onto the firewall so when you are using the dash r option or the dash s as a server your firewall may pop up right this is the windows firewall but you might have a firewall of whatever and it'll pop up as well please make sure you allow it through you do an exception you do a whitelist whatever your app wants to call it just to make sure that gets through okay otherwise you're gonna have other issues oh and best possible test would be to disable the firewall altogether for your testing because i've seen some software firewalls that actually knock your throughput down 30 40 percent right now iperf again 2.09 and we're doing this dash c and there's the name of the actual server et dash laptop and dash r which does reverse and this is the way the output looks by default and we've got a port number 5001 by default this window size by default just pay attention to what these defaults are and then it'll actually tell you its local ip address it'll tell you the remote ip address all that good stuff and then it gives you the actual numbers in this case that's the upload and then that will be the download so we're going to run these tests five times okay at the end of this what i usually do with five tests i drop the high i drop the low and i'm left with three and i average those out that's typically what i do so i have some kind of sample you can do as many as you like move on to iper version three so now the minus r the dash lowercase r is now an dash uppercase r a capital r so you got to remember that or know that otherwise it won't work with version three in version two the client would send then receive in one test in version three that dash r either sends without the dash r or it receives with the dash r it doesn't do both right so it behaves differently it's not a problem unless you know that with version three you can run uh, udp or tcp tests from the client without reconfiguring the server so with version two the server has to have the dash u to match up with the client in version three it doesn't have to the server just stays the way it is just iperf dash s and the client can run any test they want version three uses a different port number 5201 and version two uses 5001 so again that's slightly different version three supports some csv reporting if you like right that's really cool if you're into that kind of thing ip version three supports i'm sorry iperf version three supports ipv6 version 3 can omit the first few seconds which is awesome because sometimes the first few seconds are a little slow and then it ramps up version 3 can add a prefix string this is also very cool for the people who likes to do their own reporting so on to version 3 as you can see the numbers are slightly different the output is slightly different so i'm going to do the same thing did all my tests all five of them drop the high drop the low and we're left with three now we do the dash r which again we'll do we did an upload now we're doing a download get all these numbers put them in a chart and you can see version 2 the average upload was 903 megabits per second version 3 was 866 and the average download was 934 and 925 respectively so the point of this chart isn't to say one's bad it's to tell you that they're different they're different iperf programs they're going to behave differently right so there's a lot of tweaking you can do to make it better, but this is all using default, right? Default values. So feel free, feel free. Ooh, there's a mouthful. Feel free to play with window size options. Um, all these things that might make it better for you, go ahead and play with it. But at least you have a starting point. And the goal of the article is not to be in depth at all. I just want to introduce you to iperf, 
both versions and I want to illustrate that they may report different results okay so you got to know that going into it um, lastly here's a whole bunch of typical iperf commands that you might want to take a look at I'm going to put this in the write-up for you just so you can copy and paste it a little bit easier and if you want to automate iperf uh, one way to do it is you take that iperf command put it in a batch file Windows scheduler whatever you want to use and you can take all the output go through it compile your results or this is kind of cool kind of new the other option is to use NetBees free virtual agent it's free so you can configure an iperf using your existing version 2 server version 3 is not supported yet or any other NetBees agents that you might have and this is the way it looks so let me go back to this one screen you can see here it says schedule test I don't know how good your eyes are it says schedule every hour on 0 10 20 30 40 and 50 minutes after the hour and I did that I picked as many as I want you can go to town right just don't go crazy and then this is the way the report would look so as you move your mouse over an area the little box the hover box appears and it tells you what the speed was for that time frame and you want to see how consistent it is over time that is the goal if it's not consistent things may be too far apart you may have a high latency you may have packet loss or the network topology may not be all that consistent like Wi-Fi that sort of thing all right so hope that helps have a good day bye for